What's up dudes, Chooch back with another one. Today I'm gonna to be going out on the Beagoat EXN and trying these new C3 Bio Clark pads. And these things are wild, man. I've really, really been liking these Clark pads since I got them installed on there. These are brand new. And I just decided to throw them on the EXN. I got the EXN right here with the Shinko 244 tire on it and the Clark pedals and then the, these new Bio Clark pads. And this thing is actually handling great, guys. I was really able, I was really impressed with the stability on it, just the overall feeling of control that I had with these. I mean, it really impressed me. Um, right here, I'm going down Flagstaff Mountain in Boulder, Colorado, cruising down Flagstaff on this thing, and I'm kind of locked in on it. I've got those power pads adjusted to where they're really right there on top of my feet. And if you notice, one is kind of in a different spot than the other one. And that's the way that I like to set my power pads up. If I do get them adjusted perfectly, one thing you'll notice is I'll stagger my stance out. And one, one side will be a little bit different than the other. And that's how I've always rode, guys. I've always rode with my left foot a little bit farther forward than my right foot. And it's, it really, like if you ask any really good rider about like about that they'll let you know the same thing like um you you rarely ever are riding with your feet perfectly exactly in the same spot on both pedals um if you're a really good rider i mean you got your feet staggered a little bit and you're using your toe on one side more than the other you're steering with one side more than the other um it really you kind of adapt this whole way to it like I, I noticed that I especially apply way more weight to my dominant side, to my right side, and then my left foot is almost like my steering foot and my throttle control foot, while my right foot is mainly like my weight brace. And it sounds crazy, um, and it, most people that have been riding for more than like a year will know exactly what I'm talking about. But for a new rider, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to just keep your weight even on this. You're trying to keep your power pads perfectly even. You're trying to keep everything even. And in reality, that's not what you want to. Like a, you're you're gonna ride with a little bit of a staggered stance in there and your power pads are going to feel better with one side slightly different than the other side. So when you go to set it up, like in the, that tutorial I gave, like put a magazine behind it like this and then figure out exactly where you like it for, for both sides of your feet. And it may be a little bit different. You might want to go ahead and stand up on it and see where your feet naturally fall. And if you have a magazine behind that power pad, you can really adjust it to where you want it without it continually sticking over and over and over again. And it makes a huge difference, guys. It really does. Because one thing that will happen um, that if you, if you can't get them adjusted right, then you're going to want to cut them. Like, there, you know, there's little notches in these where you can cut them and expand them and make them... Um, and put them in a different spot, but I would really uh, suggest going not doing that and not cutting them and just getting them exactly right because what what it does when you cut them is it really cuts down on how well they stick to the side of the thing. And some would argue with me and say, you know, it doesn't, but it definitely does. Like in cold weather and stuff, the more you cut down the power pad, say you have two smaller pieces instead of one large panel stuck on the side. It just sticks less. Uh, it sticks a lot less well because it's um that the, the way the Velcro works. The larger the surface area is, just the better the better overall um, outcome you get when it comes to sticking one of these to the side of a unicycle. So that's what I would suggest. I would like I really like these power pads, but just adjust them perfectly right and don't go cutting them unless you really need to um, to get them to to the way you like them. Um, with these. Like I'm wearing high top shoes and I had to adjust them a little bit farther forward just to, to where they came up over the rear of my high top so it wouldn't have them. So these are the C3 Clark beds. Got the Clark pedals on here. Got the uh, Shinko 244 knobby tire on it. And uh, this has been a great wheel. So I've raced this wheel. I won at Apple Valley on it. And then I also raced it at Doris Ranch. And um, I raced in the last off-road race as well. Um, it's just a heavier wheel, but if you want a fast wheel that can do a long-range ride, this is it. I mean, you can go all day riding on this thing, and it's still nimble enough to jump and kind of do what you want to with when it comes to, uh, you know, having a nimble wheel. 
So this is what it looks like when they come in the box. And these are really, I mean, you're getting something quality, guys. This is not just like paying somebody to 3D print something in their basement. Like this is really, um, it, they look good, they feel great. They actually are designed um, to do what they do and they do it well. Um, so any power pads you choose to go with out there, um, I would. I was one of those hard-headed people when I first started riding. And I was like, man, I could make one of these damn things with a yoga block or something. I'm the Shinko 244 air down a little bit, and I feel safer with a knobby tire because it has more um, meat between that the tire and the rim. So that's why I've, I, I'm airing it down a little bit, and I'm getting crazy good traction. But it's really not the case. Like it. The power pads make a big difference and you can try to design your own and you can you can get away with making your own or you know designing something that works decently but you're not going to make something that works this well and looks as good as like power pads you can just go ahead and buy from somebody that makes them somebody that has already been doing this for a while and 3d printing these things it really makes a big difference and with it, i probably would still be hard-headed about it and not bought them yet but um, I really enjoy all the different power pads I have, all the different colors, designs. Uh, let's buckle the helmet before we get too rowdy on this thing. Too rowdy, too rowdy. Perfect spot to put the camera. Oh, got the new gloves out finally. I wore holes to the other ones. These are great. I don't know what these are. I ordered the same ones as my other gloves, but they sent these. They're a little bit different. But I looked up the price of these and they're actually more expensive. So I'm going to just roll with them. The only thing about them is they don't have they don't have the collar. You know how the other ones had that long collar on them? These just don't have that collar. Oh well. Alright. Let's send it. This thing's fun, man. I'm liking these new cork pads, dude. I got them adjusted perfectly. So I am on the BGOAT EXN right now, and this wheel, guys, is on sale from RevRides. If you want to pick up a BGOAT EXN, like the same wheel I'm riding right here, you can get it for a crazy good price right now. You can get it for $2,399, and these are usually $2,899, but it, the Valentine's Day sale is going on like right now. As soon as this video posts, it, it'll be up for like another day at that price, and then it'll probably go away. But if you use the code CHOOCH50 at RevRides, it'll save you even more on it. And if this you're seeing this video later, then that's a way you can still save some money is just use the code CHOOCH50 altogether. C-H-O-O-C-H 50 altogether. And it'll save you some money. But yeah, like I, I really think out of all the wheels available on RevRides website right now, the EXN high speed is definitely the best, best bang for the buck. I mean, you're getting uh, a wheel right here like, it is very powerful um a lot of range guys this only has th 300 watt hours less than like the v13 challenger and the challenger is almost four thousand dollars or is four thousand so think about that it's crazy what a little altitude gain will do man all this is just ice 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 stuff so you see that you can, a little bit of altitude gain and the whole trail is iced up up here as you get a little bit farther up the mountain but the Shinko 244 handles this ice and snow pretty good. It's it's not the like the most incredible tire for it, but I think it's a really good like happy medium between the two. And it is like this tire, like if you hold this tire compared to like the stock one. I got these new cork pads tight on my feet. There's no room for error today. I gotta stay on it no matter how how abrupt the slide gets. Oh, oh, oh. So if you hold the stock tire and the Shinko 244 tire, the one that I have on here, this is like a dual sport tire, like a, like a, I don't know, it's like a moped, like dual sport tire. I don't know what it is exactly, um, but it is heavier. That is very, so, very slick, very slick. The part where it's just glazed over, dude, it's like no traction at all. But because it is like an actual street rated, um, like enduro cross, or I guess, like a dual sport type of tire it is heavier and if you're holding them side by side the stock tire and then this one this one's way heavier i'm talking three four times heavier than the stock tire 
it it really is up to rider preference like I, there's a lot of people that would get this tire and put it on their exn and not like it um especially like if you're a, a road rider if you only like riding on the road and stuff there's really no point of getting this just because your acceleration is going to be extremely limited now after you put this on there it just takes a lot more um, inertia to get this thing going um as opposed to uh the stock tire on it that stock tire just spins really freely just because it's not nearly as heavy i do like this setup though i do i do like the shinko 244 on the exn um, but if I was going to race it or, or if I was going to race it off road or if I was going to race it on road, I would definitely change it. This is not a good tire for a racing scenario. There's way better tires out there. Even some with better tread, I would say, for off road that are just lighter weight than this thing. This thing is just heavy. The EXN, though, with this setup has really just been a tank, though. I mean, it is tried and true, and this thing is, it is. It holds up and just keeps on going, man. This one is one of my best long-range wheels right here, including my OG veteran Sherman. Um, those are like my two long-haul wheels that just keep working. They have some flex to them. So right there on the front, see how they have some give to it? So if you hit a bump and surge forward, it doesn't just power the wheel and make you go full spin. That's the problem with a lot of the old pads that don't have that flex to them, dude. And these have nice flex to them when you're going down like that. I'm liking them so far. I'm liking them. I'm liking them. Chris, you got a winner with these, man. You got a winner.